Hello there, YouTube people. I think you may want to switch to a Mac. I did recently. This is a, uh, a Mac Mini. And it is pretty small. Uh, figured I'd do a little tutorial. I've had it for a couple of days. And, um, you know, if like myself, you're looking for a cheap Mac to kind of get you into the Mac world without having to spend a ton of cash on one of the new laptops or something like that see if it's for you. It's a pretty decent machine for it, so. Had it for a couple of days now. This is an older Mini. It's a, uh, a G4, 1.42 gigahertz processor, 80 gigabyte hard drive. It's got the Super Drive, which burns CDs. It'll burn DVDs. And uh, Airport and Bluetooth. Airport's Apple's version of Wi-Fi. There's a lot of neat things. You buy some other hardware from them. They got this Airport Express thing that'll stream video to your home stereo, print to a, a remote printer. It does all sorts of stuff. So, just going to go over a couple things that um, will give you an indication of what it's like to work on one of these on an everyday basis, and um, show you a couple neat things that it does. So, without further ado, we'll uh, we'll get going. This down here on the bottom is your dock. Doc houses shortcuts for applications that are on your machine. Not necessarily all the applications. You can pick and choose what you want in here. If, for instance, I want to remove a shortcut from here because I don't use that app, uh, what don't I use? Apple Works, for instance, because I have Microsoft Word. Just drag it out, poof, goes away. If uh, I wanted to bring an application into the dock that isn't necessarily there, like, uh, oh, I don't know iChat, which I don't normally use, but say I wanted to. Just drag it into the dock, and now I have a shortcut for it there. It's that easy. Uh, the dock is also a good indication as to what you have running on your machine at any given point in time. If you have an application open, like I have Firefox, my internet browser open, you'll notice, and you probably can't see it, but um, down on the bottom over here, there's like a little black triangle. It lets you know that the application is running. Just because I closed this window, doesn't necessarily mean that the application itself is is quit. It's still running in the background. It's still there. Just click on it. Excuse my slow Wi-Fi. And uh, it's there. I want to quit an application. I go up here to quit. Little black triangle's gone. It's not running anymore. So you know it's running in the background at all times. Happen to have iTunes running here as well. A couple applications open. Still open up system preferences, which is like a uh, the equivalent of control panel in a Windows machine. Something that's pretty neat about this, you know, and I'm sure you know about the dock, I'm not going to go too much into detail with it, but if you go into system preferences, there's a lot of neat stuff you can do with it. Um, you can change the size, as big as small as you want, really. Um, it has this neat little thing called magnification, which I have on, and um, you can change it so it does not magnify, change it so it magnifies quite a bit. You can show and hide it. You can do whatever you want with it. That's the dock. Pretty useful. So at any rate, this neat thing that they have for uh, OS X, which I found invaluable after using the computer for a couple of days, is called Exposé. Exposé lets you set triggers, be it keyboard triggers or triggers for uh, you know hovering the mouse over certain corners of the screen. And um, it lets you work with the applications that are open. Sorry about that. Say I have a couple applications, a couple windows open, and I want to switch between the two. In normal Windows fashion, I can go down here, click on their icons on the dock, you know, and, and what will happen is, uh, I forgot to turn the magnification back on. What will happen is it'll, uh, you know, just switch between the programs that I have open, the applications. Expose, I have a trigger set, so when I go to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen over here, look what happens. I get little miniature versions of all the windows that are open. I can click on them. I have another trigger set in the bottom right hand corner of the screen that just shows me my desktop or brings them back. Desktop, back. All the little windows. There's another neat feature if you hit a command, the button with a little apple on it, apple tab. Now I can scroll through the stuff that I have open. Say I wanted Firefox. I want to go through there. Oh, I want the Finder. Don't have any applications open in the Finder. So, System Preferences. Go back. I mean, this is how I get around in the machine on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Got a couple windows open, you know. It's nice and easy to switch back and forth between them. Another trigger that I have set over here, if I hover in the upper right hand corner of the screen, uh, something called Dashboard. Now, Dashboard kind of brings these translucent little mini apps in. And these mini applications are called widgets. And you can manage them in Dashboard. You just click on this. There's all sorts of ones over here. The current one that I have open is just a like a weather forecast, weekly weather forecast. So I know right now what the weather is outside and what it's going to be for the next couple days. I use this all the time. Um, if you want to put another one on there, you just drag it onto your uh, your dashboard thing. So now I have this. This is a neat little one. It, uh, it's all the gas prices around your house. And you can set the, the radius. It'll tell you what, uh, what the cheapest gas is, what the second cheapest is, and so on. It takes a second for it to load up. So right here, I, I don't have any prices just because I loaded the widget very recently, but it comes up after a little bit once it does some searching through the network. But that's a neat one. There's a lot. I mean, there are literally thousands of these. They're all available for free on the Apple website. Just go there and download them. This one uh, monitors everything that's going on on my computer. What RAM I have, what kind of resources I'm using, what programs are running, what network I'm connected on the airport, what my IP address is, I mean, everything. So, it's pretty neat to have. Um, that's Dashboard. Another neat thing built in the OS is something called Expose, or uh, not Expose, Spotlight. Spotlight is up here, and it's kind of like a, maybe like a better version of uh, the Windows Finder or Search function. It's better because what happens is, and I believe they have this feature now in, uh, in Vista, but Spotlight's had it for a while. If you touch something in, it brings up the results in real time. So say I'm looking for, oh, I don't know, iCal again. Just type it in and they're all there. I don't have to sit there and wait for it to search through my machine. I can bring up an application, I can bring up, you know, documents. It, it, it doesn't even matter. So there's a keyboard shortcut for this, too. It's uh, Apple Spacebar. So any application on my machine I want to bring up, say I'm looking for, uh, I don't know, calculator. C-A-L-C-U. Calculator. There it is. There's the application. Just click on it. It's open. So... That's a neat thing to have. Um, Spotlight's pretty useful. Between Spotlight and Expose and the dock over here, you can, you know, bring up applications and everything so easily. It's, you know, it's a pleasure to work with. Um, I'm close to this stuff. Another neat thing is this, uh, this genie effect. You minimize something, it goes right down to the dock. You bring it back when you want. The OS has a couple neat things built into it. I just happen to have a. Uh, blank CD in here right now. Um, you can burn CDs directly with the OS. You don't need to download any third-party software or anything like that. Say, uh, say, open up my uh, my disk over here. I have the untitled CD down here. I know where it is. Say I wanted to take, uh, I don't know, go into my iTunes music and, you know, for simple purposes, we'll just drag a single mp3 in here, okay? Now it's in my untitled CD folder. All I need to do, over here it says recordable CD, is click burn. It'll burn whatever I drag into that folder. So, that's uh, definitely a neat thing to do. Also, what it'll do is, let's see over here, uh, like I have a video file over here. If I right click on this, and I create a, an archive of this, this right there. Now I have a zip file. It compresses folders and files for you automatically. Don't need that, so I'll throw it away. Um, what else? Oh, there's another neat thing that it does. Say I open up my, uh, my web browser and, I don't know, I come across something that some text that I wanna wanna save. I don't wanna have to bookmark the page and go back there later. I can highlight this text, okay? Just drag the text onto the desktop over here, instant text file of the stuff that I highlighted. So there's a lot of neat little uh, tricks built into this application. I've only had the computer for a couple of days, so I'm just scratching the surface of what this thing is capable of. But you can see how uh, there's some pretty awesome stuff. At any rate, there's a lot more that I could show you, but I think, uh, you know, that should give you a pretty idea of what these uh, machines are capable of and what it's like to work with them. So, anything else that you want to see, just shoot me a message and um, I'll be happy to make another one.